Hola, hola amigos, bienvenidos a nuestro canal Más Urbano TV, donde encuentras lo más urbano.
in the religion of hip hop. Please believe that. Shout out AG. Shout out my brother AG. Digging in the crates. The man, not the myth. AG. Digging in the crates. Yanori, you gotta stop. Yanori, you gotta stop. <laughs> hey, you know, Rich Flair, Rich Flair like it. Rich Flair like it. I'm trying to get the mascot on here. The one and only, the logo of the show. But for some reason, can he swear I can't get you? Christine Julius, Julius to the stars. Christine loved it. Christine loved it. That's, you got to hit up your gun for him because it, it's taking long, you know? Y'all, Christine Julius to the stars. Don Cartagena, how are you? Yo, man, with everybody stuck at home, I should get some discount on some diamonds. Man, my store is free for you. You know that. Damn, man, yo, this, Avi. This, this is a different kind of family tie. Yo, we waited a whole year and a half for that Fauda on Netflix. If you don't know Fauda, F-A-U-D-A, -A, you bug it. That that's shit a, is on. That's a definite must-watch show on Netflix. Fauda is lit. It's about the Islamic Israeli war that they're having and that, that been how going it never down stops. For years. Yeah, how it never stops. Never but stops. you know, we all gotta be at peace, especially times like this. You know, you cherish your family more, you cher you cherish <clears throat> what you do more in life and, and we all gotta be at peace. And we know a lot of people that got hurt in New York with the corona. You know what I'm saying? New York, New York is disastrous. I know a few people today close to the family that passed away and they have burials coming up tomorrow. I mean, well, tomorrow's the Sabbath, but on Sunday. Um, but it's, it's so just... weird. You want to know why, Av? Because, you know, it's like, um, you know how when you watch the news every day, like even this, the corona, it was happening in China, but it wasn't here, so we didn't really feel it. We was like, oh, some shit happening in China. So, there's places in America, according to Donald Trump, there's places in America that don't really have the coronavirus. Like in New York, everybody's dying or getting sick in New York. Everybody, yesterday I had the doctor, Mojan, on here. He said 70% of the patients he sees in the Bronx have corona. But then you can go somewhere like Arizona, and there ain't no real corona like that. So Correct. it's weird. They can't really feel what you feeling in New York. Correct. It's just only going to get worse. And if people don't stay home, it's just going to get worse. You know, I was, I, was, I was at a bodega the other day. I went to a grocery store the other day, and I, I was telling you, I saw somebody literally passing on blood to somebody. And wow. I'm like, you guys are not listening to the news. You guys don't understand what's going on. You Let know. me tell you something. When I, where I live, I love these little kids where I live. And whenever they outside, man, and music to my ears when I hear them playing and all that. But when I look out the window and they out there now, I'm like, yo, why they parents ain't got these kids social distancing? Why they not in the house? Why they, they open up the beaches in Miami? They're opening up some beaches in Miami. Why are they doing that? When, when, you, when things are just going to go even worse. It's like, it's like, it's just going to get worse, worse, and worse. Yeah, they bugging. They bugging hard, man. They bugging hard, man. They bugging. I mean, I don't know. I just think it's too early for certain places. For sure, it's too early to open back up. We all want to go back to normal lives. Trust me, I want to work. I want to open my stores. I want to do shows. I want to vibe with the people. I want to hug my friends. I want to hang out in your store. It's just, if the shit ain't safe, then, you know, you know, I'm good. I'll stay home. Most important, everybody got to stay home. Everybody got to be positive right now um, and just embrace the blessings that we have, you know, spending time with the family and the loved ones and their wives. You know, unfortunately, we're all facing this pandemic right now that nobody would think ever in their life or even their kids would even see something like this and we're facing it. But, you know, once this is over, it's going to make everybody a lot stronger it's going to make everybody realize what's even more important in life. That's you know, right. unfortunately, we don't got sports. 
We don't have, you know, what we really like doing is going to fancy restaurants and eating good food, you know, <laughs> I we don't miss have the clubs, you know, and a lot of this is going to affect uh, a lot of people for, for a while. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to literally possibly affect a whole year. possibly a whole year, if not a little bit more, but if uh, we work together and, and people listen to the news and, you know, all their local politicians and the radio and, and listen to the people that they really, really look up to and everybody comes and unites together. We'll defeat it faster. That's you know? right. I'm That's thinking. Right. I'm thinking New York will open June first. I don't think it'll be. I don't think it'll be May fifteenth. Bold prediction by Pristine Jewelers. Bold prediction. I said it from the beginning. Everybody yeah, was saying I think April June first. Yo, let me go because the big big show's guest today is in the building. You stay tuned so you can see who this is one of your favorites. One of your favorites. <laughs> I love you, Robbie. Love you, brother. Oh my God, the man, not the myth has arrived ladies and gentlemen wow. ladies i need a haircut joe joe and I, I gentlemen i just want to make it i just want to make it clear everybody knows i need a haircut it is what it is but at least i'm doing the right thing correct Kelly, you're doing the most amazing thing and you know what i think you like this haircut i think i think this is part of your you struggle. You letting us know, like you you're struggling. You going through it. So so you got this. Shout out to Timbo the King. He got the same haircut. Yeah, I was shut. on Facetime with him today. He, he he got the same haircut. But Kelly, I think you enjoy this hair. Like I think no, you no, actually no, no, no. like it. I'm gonna be honest with you. I I I really really miss a haircut. Like oh, you really do? Yeah, yeah, yeah because you know. Haircuts make you feel good, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, right now we all lock, you know, we we, we on the quarantine alert. Um, so, you know, the, the times that we do get a little depressed or depressed or sad watching the news, um, it just, this, the hair don't help. It don't help. It's not helping the situation. Nah, nah, that's nah, not helping the situation, man, not at all. But we blessed, man, you know what I'm saying? that You know, I've been getting a lot done in the crib. I've been spending time with the family. Um, but I, I just hate to see people suffer. I hate to see what's going on out there. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. And um, even when it's time to, oh, what, what they say, open up. Let me up. ask you a question, Kevin. Yeah. You, you live in a compound, right? Your home is a block long. It's a compound, right? And when I talk to you, you're still, like, nervous. And you don't let nobody in your house, nobody out of your house. You won't even let me. Your wife the other day, shout out my sister Nicole. She was like, let's just ski to Joe's. And, and you was like, no, 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 no. We good. And you know I've been home. For now, you know, that. you know, it's crazy because I told, I, I told my queen, if we already quarantine alert 35 days, why? Just tell me why do I want to take a chance? Take a chance. If I was going to take a chance, I would have did it earlier because I'm thinking it's not real. I'm 35 days in. Like, I might as well just ride it out. You know what I'm saying? Why am I going to take the chance? Why? Khaled, let me ask you something. You came. You wasn't taking it as serious as me. It was Lorena, my wife's birthday. You pulled up in the yacht. By the way, I live one minute away from DJ Khaled. My house isn't as big as DJ Khaled, but I live one minute away. So Khaled pulls up to my island. I live on the water. And it's the biggest yacht I've ever seen in my life in the history. And when Khaled's on the yacht, he starts dancing. And he's FaceTiming. And he's like, yo, we're here. Jump on the boat. And I said, I'm not going, Khaled. And you was like, nah, but we good. But we did. I was like, I'm not Never. going. Listen, the very next day, you got serious about yeah, this. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Cause you know, my queen, she she gassed me up to go out on the yacht. She's saying, cause you know, they, they just put the, the 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 bulletin out there that we gotta shut down in a day or two. So get your food right. You know, they put the you know, put the, the, the bulletin. So I was like, you know what? Let's go clear our minds real quick because we about to go into quarantine alert. And of course, we was cautious. We cleaned everything. We had our, our cleaning people. Um, I, I hired a cleaning team, went in there, cleaned it up, um, wore gloves. 
and this is like the, what was it the first day of this first day. day before so and me going out in the water you know i was really thinking about it it really hit me then you know what I'm saying because i was wearing a mask and gloves and i'm like what am this is real i'm like i'm out here in the water i'm saying to myself now nah, this is real but ever since that day i've been home you know that i know i know i've been home i've been home kelly i want to ask you because uh last year when I'm before you, you ask me a question week, i want to make a this the show this the big show this, this the, the big show this not because you're my brother this the show this the big show i want to i loved your tyson interview it was classic um, you know, not only do you tell the best stories, you really, uh, not only telling the truth, but like you really, those stories are real. Cause I'm watching the show and I'm like, I remember some of these stories when you was with Remy and you was talking about some of the stories. I'm like, he's, he's telling the truth. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I wanted to jump in the live. I wish it was a three way live because I wanted to add to the story. Cause I was, part, I was there for some of the story, you know what I'm saying? But go ahead and ask your question, go ahead. Yesterday was crazy. I was talking to Ja Rule and, and I don't know why. I've had the crazy, we got kidnapped in, in Africa together. We went to, to this shit that happened to me that I be thinking is so crazy, Khaled, that I be thinking it's a lie. Yeah. And then when I <laughs> talk to Ja Rule, I forget he was there. So when he I know. said, yo, the little kid had the grenade launcher, I was like, oh my yeah. God. Like, what the fuck? It really happened. I know. I know. All right. So I want to tell you, I'm with you. You've been my friend, my brother, for over 25 years. Every year I try to be with you on your birthday. You try to be with me, even though some years we work. But last year we toasted in your house to your birthday. And I told you how proud I was for you inspiring people to, to, to stay with their families and, and 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 it's okay to show your kids love and it's okay to embrace your family and i think a lot of people love you because of that and um so my first real question for you is Assad. yeah what does Assad mean to you describe where you think he's gonna be that what's his personality Cause you know we get little clips of him, but we all love him, and we seen him in in his mother's belly. But what 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 is it with Assad? I mean, Assad, you know, first of all, he's my son, so the love is 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 no words in the dictionary that can explain how much I love my son. But I'm also um, a fan of his. You know what I'm saying? Like I look at him like. He inspires me, the way he's, his swag, the way he moves, how smart he is. And also for me, and I'm saying this is for me because I don't want it, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like he's a prophet as well. Listen, that's, that's just me. That's me, you know what I'm saying? Um, but my son, he just, he's my first son. And now I have another beautiful boy. And the stay way he thought, stay with a side. Okay, okay, but I would say, but we don't go to it, law, it, No, but the reason why I'm saying that is question. because the way he holds down his brother already, it, I already knew he was going to do that. Like, I knew, like, I know whatever he wants to do when he grows up, it's, we, we support him, we got him, but I just know that he's going to hold all of us up. You see what I'm saying? And he just has this, this glow on him, man. It just, He's my son, but sometimes I'd be like, man, look at that boy. Like, I can't believe, like, I'm, I can believe it. You know what I mean? It's the, the word I'm saying is like, I'm a fan. You know, of when my I'm on son. the plane, you know, when I'm on the plane, uh, I do a side. He's like my brother, you know what I'm saying? But he's my son. He's my best friend. He's my best friend. That's, that's the key. But go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, I know I'm just saying, you know, I'm afraid to fly, even though me and you started flying. And whenever the plane shakes, I start talking to this picture I got of the side where he's in the middle of the jungle on some thing. You took some picture in Jamaica with him that he looks like Jungle Boy. He looks yeah. like, and I'll be like, yo, don't let your uncle go down. Don't let your uncle go yeah. down. And I do Vanessa's daughter and I do my god daughter. Uh, Remy's daughter. I do. I go to them three. It used to just be a side, but I go to the, I go to the kids as I go, and I go to you as he. But you know, your goddaughter's here. You know. Um, no. As he, what's up? I love you, girl. And 
I want y'all to know. Uh, so now we got alarm. Yes. Alarm. Alarm is the militant one. Yeah. Alarm's gonna be the one to really hold the side down. Yeah, and alarm. Shout out Swiss Beats on the check in. Swiss A zone, zone, zone. Zone, zone, <laughs> zone, zone. <laughs> Um, alarm. Tell me something about alarm because personally, I was on the road. I still haven't got a chance to meet my nephew, and I feel horrible about that. I feel horrible that I haven't been able to look him in the eyes and really pick him up. We love well, you, Swiss. Alarm. You know his name means the world in Arabic, and I had a conversation with my son Alarm the other day, and I was just telling him. Boy, you something special because you you came in the world at a special time. In mm. a special time, and I'm trying to explain to him. I know he's a baby. I know he's two and a half months old. I get it. But I talk to my kids the same way I talk to them now. I know I'm going to talk to them when they're 25. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm talking to my kids with real talk. And I was telling Alam, I was like, yo, Alam, you know, you came in the world at a special time. You know, it's a lot going on. And his name is means the world. And and what I learned about Alam, he has this seriousness, seriousness about him. His face, he'll crack a smile, he'll laugh. You know what I'm saying? Mom will get him to laugh and all, but he's like serious with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and he weighs about five, six more pounds than a side did at the age he is now. Boy. He's yeah. gonna be cock diesel. He's gonna be a big boy. Yeah, Rich he, play, he already he cock diesel. Football with. in the future, Rich gonna have to coach him. Alarm gonna be a big boy. Big. No, he's a he's gonna he's a big boy, but um, you know, this is a year that I think nobody's gonna ever forget. This they're gonna talk about twenty twenty for the rest of ever. And Assam was born twenty twenty. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he's only two and a half months old, but he's already, he, he has this, he got this cabinet in him, and then he got, like, this other energy that I know that he just, he's, he's tough. It's tough. It's tough. He's tough. He's a tough guy. He's a tough he's guy. A tough one. He's a tough one. Yeah, he's tough. And they're both tell. beautiful, man. And, and But you got to see a side really, really, he be holding it like, like it's a routine. He wakes up, where's the alarm? Where's my brother? I need to kiss him. If he cries, I need to kiss him. You know, he's already doing the big brother perfect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me ask you something, right? So me and you, we go back since, de since, since you were skinny and you was with DJ Nasty and mm -hmm. you was just DJing coming up in the game. And I'm going to skip a whole lifetime and just go, what moment, right? Because you just went on this roll and just never looked back from the first song to the first move to the making movies with Will Smith. Now, at what point, I mean, did you ever know, be honest, don't, 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 like, be honest. You know, we always going to be nah, honest. No, 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 no. always going to be that. But did you ever think you get to this level of success, like this level. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, and when I answer it, I, I'm I, I need a little time to speak afterwards. Okay. Um, I did believe that I'd be at this level, and I believe I'm gonna be at a bigger level. I always knew, but I always knew with hard work that it get me here, and I always knew that. Nothing's going to be given to me. Now, I want to give you a shout out and tell you how much I love you on this live because you're one of the first people to believe in me, uh, co-sign me, put me on your biggest records and uh, on your biggest record to this day uh, on Lean Back. You said my name. And not even just that, forget just the hits and records that you let me stand beside you and, and let me learn. You know what I'm saying? I want to take it back to like when I first met you. I met Joe at New Music Seminar in New York City. I had his vinyl. It was the Flow Joe vinyl. Um, it was actually 
Um, the album, the vinyl the and the album. album. The album. And I met Joe outside of the seminar, and I had the, the album in my hand. And I was I always been a Fat Joe fan. So I was like, got introduced to Joe. And Joe looks at me and goes, like, how you got that? And at that time, Joe, he doesn't smile like he smiles now. He usually has this one eye that goes this way. And then the face is like, it does some, and it's 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 not a movie. It's some real gangster shit when you when you step to Joe, and um, so I didn't know what he was trying to tell me, like, cause you know back in them days, you know bootlegging was big, you know white labels were big, so I I had an early early release of Joe's album, and he was just like, you know, um, he showed me love, and from that day on, you know, he said if I ever come to Florida, I'm a I'm gonna link up with you, and um, you know I met you know Joe came to Florida. He had a show with uh, Nas, and Shaq came on stage with him. It was uh, in Orlando at that time, and uh, Joe had Pung with him. And I met him in um, Joe said, "Come meet me at the hotel." And the hotel, I think, it was like it was like some damn Holiday Inn type hotel. You know, we you know how it is back in them days. I'm just you know being honest. Riding. Yeah, we was riding and um. Pun wasn't even big pun yet. You know what I'm saying? And and even Steve Lobel was there too. Steve Lobel yeah. was there that day too. So that was early relativity. That was yeah, early. early, early. So ever since that show, because every time they post that picture with you, um, Shaq and Nas, I always reply on everybody's gram. I was there because I was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was there. Put a, when they I was put there. pictures where I was there, and I, and I, I'll be like. Like pretty much every picture they put up a pun, I was on the other side of the camera. Yeah, and I yeah. So to myself, yo, I was there. And and um, ever since that day, I moved to Miami, like two three months later. And um, you know, when I moved to Miami, you came to Miami and you heard me on the pirate radio station. Mix ninety six. Mix ninety six. Shout out to Butterfuko. Shout and, out to Butterfuko. You know what I'm saying? So you heard me on Mix 96, and I'm on the pirate radio ripping it down, and you called up live on the air. And we was talking our talk. I'm like, oh, Joe. He's like, yo, Khaled, what you doing? I'm like, you know, I'm talking my shit. I'm ripping it down, breaking records. And um, well, um, let, me, let, me, let me explain how this happened. It's so much history with me and you. I know. Because people know we brothers, but I don't think they understand how far back we go and how close we really are. You know what I'm saying? We go, we go back since since before, since Flo Joe, and and you just can't be bigger brothers than us. We done been through hard times. We've been through great times. We've been through fun. We've been through bad times. We've been through everything you could be through, go through. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, shout out Hobie, baby. So, you know, we day ones, literally. And, um, so you was on the radio, and you was like, yo, it's DJ Kelly, the Don Gong Gargamel, Terror Squad leader, this. You was going crazy. So when I call up the, the, the station, I got pun with me. Yeah. So I call up the station, we driving down, and you was like, wait a minute. The boss is on the phone. <laughs> the Don is on the phone. <laughs> then you was killing it so much, and the thing was crazy because you was the first to play, like, New York style hip hop in Miami, it was all like booty music. It was it was Uncle Luke, and then when we was hearing Mob Deep, Wu Tang, shit like that, we was like, oh shit, they they let one in, right? Yeah. But it was still the underground station. Yeah, underground the underground station. We played everything. Like I would play, you know, the booty music, hip hop, and a lot of reggae. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I was playing Uncle Al, Luke, Fat Joe, Mob Deep, Cameron. You know, yeah, but you went, you went. Also, we could, we could, we could skip this whole. Con well, me and Pun went in there and we freestyled for like five hours. It was three fat dudes. Me, you, and Pun. We had our shirts off because Mix ninety six was so small. It had no AC, and we was up in there freestyling with you. And that, and that was the beginning. And then the next step we took was uh the temple. Yeah. The temple was, the the temple was. DJ Khaled's birthday. So now when you see DJ Khaled's birthday with The Weeknd, Usher, uh, Kanye, it all started at the temple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was me and Pun, shout out to Tone Arnest. He was there. But uh, 
we did your birthday, and that was when that was when Big Pun was yeah. up. That, so 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 big so Joe did my birthday party with Pun, and this is before Pun officially like went to the the mega star mania. But they knew it. They, they no, they knew it. No, the, street, the streets knew it. So I want to tell you, so Joe sits me down. We on South Beach, and I'm sitting in Joe's Lexus, and Joe plays me Twins. He's like, yo, check this out. I'm going to play you this record. And it was Twins. And you was kind of, I don't know, I, I, I was so long time. I think you was trying to tell me this going to be on a mixtape or something. I'm like, yo, bro, this is, this, this, this the record record. This like the, the this this is it. This is the biggest record ever. And y'all performed it at the birthday and they lost their mind. When I say we have it all I have the footage. I have the footage. And they lost their mind. But you know, that's when everything started, you know, the relationship got tighter and tighter. But also I wanna, you know, thank you for giving me an opportunity because as a producer, you know what I'm saying, you push me uh every day because you was making the albums from the Terror Squad album to the Fat Joe album, and you'd be like, yo, Cal, you know your family. Um, where the heat at? So every day I'd be Beat in my Nova garage. Came. Yeah, I was, I was called Beat Nova Kane at that time. House, in your studio, in your house. No, no, that's what I want to get to. So I was called Beat Nova Kane at that time, making beats. And I remember when Joe would come to my house, I couldn't wait to play him a beat. You know, all the beats I made, I would make like 10. I wouldn't sleep. And... um he loved them. You know, I, I got on the Terror Squad album. I got on Joe's album. And at that time, I was known as Beat and Overcame. But, um, but the memories that I loved so much was, you know, I remember when you recorded Lean Back in my studio in Jerusalem. You recorded my, I used to call my studio Jerusalem. I remember Remy Martin, you know, Lean Back was done already. You know what I'm saying? You know, Joe, the record was done, ready to mix. Then Remy Martin, came to the crib and heard the record and was like, yo, pull that record up and mute um, this space right here because I'm going on right here. She jumped in the booth, legendary, whipped it down and left. Who she did she bump? Was that drop? Was drop the engineer? Drop, drop, drop was engineering at that time and she whipped it down. But after she whipped it out, she just left. Like, that's how she, she knew she blazed it. And, um, I just remember you recording Lean Back. I remember you, you know, writing to it. I remember um, I was with you with Scott Storch when he was making Lean Back. I was with you in the studio yes, at house. Scott's house when he was making Lean Back. So all this inspiration, you know, I'm like a sponge. So, you know, I was just, you know, as a DJ and as a producer, I'm taking all this shit in. You know what I'm saying? I remember Swiss Beats pulling up in his tour bus in, to my house and he played you, um, T.I. Uh, T. hit Bring Him Out. Like, yeah, you could have had Bring Him Out. He played it for you. You know what I'm saying? Bring Him Out, Bring Him Out. Bring Him Out. He played Bring Him Out at the crib. You know? Um, but Yo, but you know, listen, they don't know that you pushed me to get that uh, Lean Back remix done with Eminem. And you was on me every day. This is before you had a record deal. So the type of pressure that you apply now, you was applying it to me like, Go get Eminem. Go get Eminem. Go get Eminem. Yeah. I was like, yo, yo, Khaled, man, Eminem don't fuck with niggas like that. Like, I'm going to use like, nah, he ain't going to tell you no. Go no. get, now go I, get Mace. I, yo, go get I Mace. knew, I knew Simon. we was in a swimming pool when we were talking about the remix, and I was like, I said, you got to get Eminem. And you you did say that. I don't, Khaled, I don't know what you're going to do. I said, yo, listen, this is the biggest record in the world. Ain't nobody saying no to this. I don't give a fuck who it is. Ain't nobody saying no to this. They not. You can't say no to a lean back. And at that time, that shit was such a force. It was such a force. It was so unbelievable. And I remember the remix. I was with you when we went to Little John. Little John had a house out there on the water, on the beach. And he was cooking up the remix. And I'm just being honest. I'm just telling you the truth when I say this. Um, you know, he was cooking it, making it right there in your face. And, you know, he was trying to figure it out. And I was just like, that's little John, legendary. And I, I just put my little two cents in, my little two cents in. And I was just telling John and you, I don't know if everybody remembers, but I was like, yo, John, it's very simple. Just take what Scott Storch did and put your sounds and that's it. 
your 808 and your keyboard sound, and that's it. Don't fuck with it too much because the original was too legendary. Just take your sounds, because at that time, he, he, he brought that 808 on another level, the crunk. I said, put the 808s and the shit that your, your keyboard sound, the same way, same melody, same everything that Scott did, but just switch it to Little John. You know, because that's what Remix is about. I'm just being honest. I don't know if anybody remembers. And I remember Khaled. I had an ear infection that day, and it was like, so it was like a real memorable day. You know what I'm saying? So, nah, this, Joe, I've been there. I was there, Joe. I was there. I was there. I've been there. I, I was, listen, I was in New York City, Puerto Rican parade when Fat Joe Pun mobbed deep. What club we was in? with the clear gap glass and the VIP. That we, was crazy. I remember that was a that. crazy one. That was so legendary. So Everybody we would do, that. so what people don't know, so say in New York City, the biggest parade was called the Puerto Rican Parade. And Fat Joe's the reason they ever play. I'm going to put this in the Fat Joe book, is the only reason they ever played hip hop in the parade. So I went up in there, and it was more like Spanish, salsa, and all that. And I had to go see this man, rest in peace, he's dead. His name is Ramon Velez. And I went four years in a row, and I kept explaining to him, yo, Puerto Ricans is hip-hop. They love hip-hop. So he finally let us get a float in the parade. And, you know, what people don't understand was that Fat Joe, big pun in the Puerto Rican parade, we literally would stop in the middle of the parade, and there would be one million people around the whole float where you couldn't even see concrete. You couldn't even see floor. Yeah, it was crazy. It was um, crazy. Lean back, I turned. So you on the off block, lean back. I turned on the parade. Didn't even get half the block. That shit came on and said, boom, 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 boom. Yo, they rushed the barricades. They rushed the cops. You couldn't even see concrete. All you see was one million people and the police forced me. They didn't let me do the parade. And that was on the Hot 97 float. Ebro was there. Uh, Angie was there. All of them was there. They forced us. They forced us to stop. They was like, no, nah, no, nah, can't it, go on. It was, what about when we was in Miami Memorial Day weekend and Renee McClain and Lillette had that party? And, you know, this is, you know, this is Miami. You know what I'm saying? I, I used to DJ it every week. And I, you know, I wanted to play for like 10 minutes and I came with you and a hundred people with me, you know, Joe and the whole crew. And we came on that stage. No, no, no. It was, it was all love. We just said, we need Calvin to play for 15 minutes. That's it. We need 15 minutes. And I came in with a stack of records. And when I tell you, so I'll let you tell the story. Tell them how that, tell them how I ripped that shit. Like, that shit was like... Kelly, let me they, say something to you. They got to have footage of it. We got to ask Renee McClain and let... Somebody had to film Shout that. out to Shout out Shout out Renee legendary. McClain family. Uh, I was... Uh, yo, Kelly, let me tell you something. And I'm not saying that just because you my brother. But when you was a, a, just a DJ, before you was thinking about artists making hits and all that, you was killing it more than anybody. You was destroying parties. People were in line, bum rushing to see DJ Khaled. DJ, this is before. Yeah, every... this is this is this is Let this the beginning. You, I never asked you this, and I'm gonna ask you this now and answer the question, right? Who was your favorite DJ? Who who, who you looked up to? I looked up to Funk Flex, Kid Capri, Clark Kent, Ron G, Duwa. Um, um, and can't be calling me. And, no, stop. and um, Premier Pete Rock, you know, say because you know, I'm a heavy DJ, so I had I had a lot of favorites, and every one of them was um. There's a reason why I love them. Like Kid Capri, it, party wise, I just was. You can ask him. I was a little kid in the DJ booth while he was DJing and just watching. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I know Funk I was Flex. there with you. Yeah, <laughs> you Funk used to be Flex. like, yo, Joe, Kid Capri is DJing. Let's go over there and watch him. And we would sit down and you would just watch him. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I seen you, um, one time you took me rest in peace 
to see DJ AM. Oh, yeah, so for DJ sure. DJ AM, AM was the first one to rock oh. with the Serratos, I think. And, and AM, AM, because he, he, he whipped down these crowds that were so versatile that amazed me. Meaning as in a real hip hop crowd, but also like a South Beach crowd that, you know what I'm saying? Like he knew how to put it all in one. Um, and I love Clark Kent because me and Clark Kent, um, I used to open up for Clark Kent all the time. And Clark Kent, I, when I was making my beats, I used to give him beat CDs and he would play them for Biggie. You could ask him. He would play them for Biggie. Guys be like, yo, play this for Biggie, play this for Biggie. Because I used to open up, we did a, a, a club a rolling, a rolling skate ring, and me and Clark Kent was DJing, and he was with Biggie at that time, like, you know what I'm saying, always with Biggie. So I, you always like, give me beats, give me beats, and he would always listen to my beats and, 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 and tell me, you know, what I need to do. So he always showed me the love. I used to open up for Ron G um, uh, at Howard Homecoming, you know what I'm saying? And um, um, I used to love uh, Jam Pony Express, too. You know what I'm saying? Out here in Miami, you know, Uncle Al and Jam Pony Express, they used to ride over like African Bambada and Soul Sonic Force, and, but they used to talk. You know what I'm saying? Like, one time, you know what I'm saying? Like Luke, like Luke, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, that Miami, you know what I'm saying? That real Miami DJing and, um, and, and Flex, I love Flex because he had the radio, but he also made records and he had the club. So I seen with Flex, I was like, oh, Flex, I love how he he, 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 he did so, a lot. He had the car show, the clubs, and records, and I think sneaker deal. Like, he, I was like, oh, he trying to, like, now I'm a kid. Remember, I'm a kid, and I'm watching this, and I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, he, this, 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 this can go somewhere now. This can go somewhere now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and um, when I started doing radio, after Pirate Radio, you know, I did the Luke show. And then I got my own show on 99 Jams. And I used to remember people telling me that, Tyler, you can't be bigger than the radio station. Like, um, like they always, like people always tell you you have to be in a box. And I'm like, nah, I, 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 I want to be on the radio. I want to make beats. I want to produce records. I want to put albums out. And speaking of that, I want to let the world know that Joe Crack, he got me my first record deal with Koch Records uh, when nobody would give me one that nobody believed in me and he walked in uh, the, the record company and introduced me to Alan Grumblatt. It was me, Joe, sitting at a table with Alan Grumblatt and you told Alan Grumblatt, yo, listen, this is my man. I'm telling you, he gonna be something big. He make hit records and he's a special DJ. He know what he doing. Give him a deal. And I got my deal. And not only did I get my deal, and yeah, and not only did I get my deal, I sold more records in uh, Koch Records than anyone. <laughs> I'm just, no, I'm just, no, I'm just being Yo, honest. Kelly, you know, you know those those deal those albums you was putting out was all had the Terror Squad logo. You yeah. know, I've never had a DJ Khaled plaque in my life. That's crazy because I got so many, man. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> Listen, yo, Patty, if you Shout out Cool and Dre, because they, they produced the first, first, what was the first single? That shit was like a movie, Holla at me, baby. Holla at me, baby. They got mad at me because I wore the grills in the yeah, video because yeah. I'm from New York. They was like, come on, Joe. You know, if you in Miami, you know, you was touching it. You was touching it. Yo, yeah, I had the grills. That's why we love you. That's why we love you, you know. Holla at me, every, baby. That's why everybody love you, you know, you. You, you love, you know, you go to people's cities and you show everybody love and everybody has nothing but respect for you. And that's why people love you, Joe. You got to understand, you know what I mean? And that's what it's about, you know? But, but speaking of records, you know, the record that changed my life was We Taking Over and I'm So Hood. Ooh. And Brown Paper Bag. Those three records came back. Brown Paper Bag. Those records changed my life. Shout Lauren, Lauren Rodinger. Hey, hey, Remy, Remy's here. She said, I'm here. Remy, you missed all the praises Yo, Cal Rem. was giving you. Yo, Rem, I told him when I told him when that lean back was in, you know, was recorded in my studio. I said, lean, uh, Rem came to the crib, opened the front door, walked right in my studio, said, pull the record up, did your verse, and walked out. And not only, oh, there's a part I forgot. You told the engineer, drop, he said, yo, mute that. 
and add this. Meaning as in, I'm going to be on this record. And she walked out knowing that she blazed it. You know, Rem, my sis, like, you know, especially Talk at that time, me, me and Rem was like super close. That's like real brother and sister. Like, you know what I'm saying? We always had great conversations. And um, um, I'm just proud of her. She has a be- Yo, congratulations on your daughter. She's so beautiful, man. She's beautiful. That's my God daughter. That's my God yeah. daughter. Yeah, for sure. Beautiful. Beautiful. She loves me. She stays, She stares at me. She grabs the phone. She just loves her godfather. Shout out Lauren. Lauren Rodinger is in the building right now. Rodinger's was good. Was Ludacris good. in the building right now. I mean, the planet Earth is in the... You know, this is the big, big, big show. Well, shout out to Luda because we got to give Luda because, you know, when my career started, when I became national, meaning as in I started... People started knowing about Khaled. Um, the record, All I Do Is Win. And All I Do Is Win, let me tell you about that record. It was the last record I recorded on that album that I had to turn in like two weeks, a week before to turn it in. And I've been waiting to get T-Pain's hook for a long time. You know what I'm saying? T-Pain, he, you know, he, he, he was at the Hit Factory and I finally came in there and I was like, yo, Payne, we got to work, please. Like, Because every day he was so big, I'm like, yo, Payne, let me get my joint in. So yo, I can I say it. one thing? Can I stop this story yeah. for one second? Please keep it right there. T-Pain, right. get it in. Right. I was at the Hit Factory one day, and T-Pain pulls up in like a million-dollar Lamborghini. And the door opens, and he comes out, and he's wearing aluminum foil, <laughs> literally aluminum foil, with a rubber band around his ankle, his sneakers, his shoes was aluminum. Nah, this guy. Yo, 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 Kelly. This was a special guy. He got out the car no, no. with no shoes. Aluminum for you. Yo, listen. On purpose. When I met T-Pain, I did I'm So Hood. The man had a Mini Cooper. A Mini Cooper. And I was on the radio. I came to drop him off the I'm So Hood record. I said, yo, I need you to do a, a, a hook on here. Man, when I tell you, you had like 100 people in the studio. And he did the hook. And the whole studio just started losing their mind. And, and I felt like we was in a club. And, and I was, it, this is my first time working with him. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. Was I'm so hood. Uh, but all I do is I'm win. I'm so hood. I'm, all I do is win. And I got the these la- goals up in my mouth. If you know what I'm talking about, I'm so hood. And if you feel me, put your hands up. You know, you know, you know I was booked out doing shows for like five years straight from that record. Every club I was getting goosebumps. I I be I be in from from Miami to Alabama to New York. Um, but shout out to Ludacris because he tuned in. I wanted to give him his praise because Luda not only was a family member and a brother of mine that always supported me from day one in my career. Anytime I called him, he always got on my music. But all I do is win. It was special because at that time, like I said, it was the last record and. I sent it to Luda, and he sent his verse back so fast. And, you know, Luda's flow is just, you know what that flow is. Unbelievable. Well, he one of my favorite, uh, he, he, you know, back in the day when he was going hard, he was one of my favorite rappers in the whole No, no, he ripped that not down. Not just but... from the South, not just from nothing. I've always, uh, I've always been a huge Ludacris fan when he was going hard. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. Nah, come on, he's, he's incredible. So... You know, Luda sent back his verse. I went to go to Ross's house. You know, Ross is my brother. You know, um, anytime I asked him to do a record, he'd do it for me. Um, I'd give him 10 records and he got me. That's the type of love we have for each other. Just like you, anything you'll do well, you for me. you Rick Ross. You, you, you just discovered Rick Ross. You, I mean, you, I, 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 I definitely helped break. You broke I broke him one million I, broke percent. I know you want to be humble. I you broke, broke Rick Ross. For sure. There's I nothing we can do about it. The world knows that. That's family. He so loves you. And no, that's it's my love. brother. That's my brother. He loves so, you and you love him. It's real love. There's nothing wrong. No, it's family. So Ross, I go to his crib and I and I play him all I do is win. He knocked out that verse for me in five minutes. Five minutes. And then Snoop Dogg, I always wanted to work with Snoop Dogg. So me and Snoop Dogg, um, I seen him at an award show one time and I was like, man, one day we got to work. And he's like, I'm waiting on you. You know, this is Snoop Dogg. I'm like, this is Snoop Dogg. 
you know, this is a guy that made Doggy Style. This is a guy that made Snoop Dogg's the most Nick. famous rapper. Shout right. out to Dolly I'm, I'm, He's so the I'm biggest out. rapper on earth. That's what I'm trying. And one of my favorite. So he said, I'm waiting on you. I couldn't believe it. So I finally, I said, if I told him, I don't know if he remembers, I told him, I was like, if I record a record with you, it got to be legendary. Because I can't just get a Snoop Dogg to say I got a Snoop Dogg. I got to get something that's going to be legendary because I know his catalog. So I sent him all I do is win. He sent that right back. That's how special that record was. It was like everybody sent their shit back so fast. And then boom, I dropped that motherfucker and it was game over. It was game. Oh, no. and, and anybody that was trying, and if you thought that I could do biggest, it again. That's, that's, that's your biggest record. The only record that's even on that level or probably took it out is the one with Rihanna and Bryson Tiller. Oh, yeah. The, the Wild Thoughts. When I produced Wild Thoughts, I was, I was, I had that. <laughs> Joe, 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 I had that idea, Wild Thoughts, years before I recorded that. I had the idea. I said, yo, I'm going to flip this. And I said, the only way that this record is going to be legendary if I get Rihanna. And I have to give... I, I have to give a shout out to Party Next Door because I called Party Next Door. I was um in LA and I called him and he came over and I played him the beat and I just told him, man, I want to get Rihanna on this, but we got to, you know, we got to, it got to be right. And, um, and then I've been wanting to work with Rihanna for like 10 years. Like I've been wanting to work with her. So I mean, Khaled, you was there the first time I met Rihanna. She Ran, no, me. she showed you she love. No, no, hey, I'm not, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I was a yo. little jealous. I was a little ah! jealous. No, listen, cause you know, I'm, you know, with Rihanna, I, I, I don't know how to act. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I got, I got all I got my pictures. Dance, you know, yo, I got yo, all my pictures framed with Rihanna. Dance, yo, Kelly, I did the dance. She ran. Oh my God, Fat Joe! I was like, no way. I this know, I know. Yo, but no let me tell you what she did. No you know, cameras allowed. No, if listen, Rihanna. Allowed? No, Rihanna at the Rock Nation brunch. You know, I was wearing that baby blue suit. You seen that with them baby blue jo You seen, don't act like you didn't Tiffany see. blue. Tiffany blue. I was Rihanna walked in. She touched my suit. And she goes, that suit looks nice on you. It's a beautiful suit. Almost lost my mind. Almost Rihanna lost different. my mind. And I, I be trying to, and I got to hold my composure because she different. I got to. You know what I love about Rihanna? Because she just keep it so real. She, she a real one. She Man, real one. I, 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 you know I'm working on my new album, Joe. <laughs> All right, so we know might as well just you know go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before quarantine. I don't want to talk too much about it. I just hold know on, I'm hold working. on. Before quarantine, yeah. that plane kept going. The We The Best airline kept going to the six 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 Toronto. It, it kept landing in Toronto. After All-Star Weekend, I almost hitched the ride with you home to Miami, but that plane went to Toronto. A few times. A few times. After my son was born alarm. Next day. My, my son was born at night in the morning. I was at Six God, uh, Drake's crib. Because I looked at Alarm. I said, Alarm, daddy got to go to work. I knew this. I said, I got two boys now. Daddy got to go to the embassy. <laughs> we got to go to the embassy. Yo, let me ask you a question, man. And Sosa, uh, Sosa, the rest, you know, you know Drake opened up. You know, restaurant, Italian restaurant called Sosa Sosa. I don't know I think, it, but I seen you eating there. It looks so, good. But no, no, it's closed. I go to Avenue and Yo, Toronto. Joe, the restaurant's closed. It's closed. It's late night. He called him up, open it up, bring the chef back, get everybody, the whole staff. Cabot's coming. Ate like a king. When I walk in, Drake said, Yo, give him uh, Drake's booth. That airplane. Is different. Oh no! So let me tell you, I got blessed. Let me tell you. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Speaking of that airplane, some boy fly jet. Man like Drizzy fly cargo and eat s 
car call. Okay. Yo, I've seen them doing the dance on the plane. <laughs> left foot up, right foot slide. Uh, left you know, he played slide. me that record before it came out. I told him, ask me this question. How do you spell billboard? Drake. D R A K E. <laughs> it's called. I told him that's gonna go number one out the gate. It's different it's just, type of guy. Different type yeah, he different. of guy. Amazing guy. To turn off. I, we gotta come back on. This is about to turn off. It's warning me. Um. So was that a confirmation of Drake's on the new album, or it wasn't a confirmation? Did I tell you I'm working on my album? <laughs> just know this. Just know this. Listen. You know the Fat Joe show gets exclusive. I mean, Joe, Joe, I want you to use your best imagination. You know me very well. And you know Drake's one on thing. The album. You know Drake's one thing. On the album. It's called my first. Your first single off the new album? Yeah, Joe, I'm in the studio. <laughs>